Hello, I'm Lars Sage, Gallery Manager of the Art Center of Estes Park. And I want to welcome you to the first of a series of additional interviews focusing on photography. I welcome the first of our photographers in this series, John Shelton. And John's been an artist member since September of 2018. Welcome, John. Yeah, thanks, Lars. Thanks for having me on. So, um, how long have you been shooting photography? Well, I turned professional about five years ago, but I picked up my first DSLR back in the mid-1980s. It was film back in those days. And uh, I've had a 35-year career as an arts administrator, working with artists and, and uh, looking at uh, artists' work and grants panels and things like that. So I've developed an eye for probably 40 years, but uh, really, uh, really been earnest about it in the last five years. Hmm. Um, you know, what types of photography do you specialize in then? Well, I don't have a particular style yet. I'm still sort of sorting that out. I'm too excited by all the various things that I can still do mm -hmm. technically with mm -hmm. the camera. So I'm still exploring, but I spent a lot of time doing landscapes, uh, natural landscapes as well as urban landscapes. But uh, these days with COVID, I'm spending more time out in the woods. <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, I'll also do uh, uh, abstractions and street photography, uh, architectural photography. Mm -hmm. Um, it runs a pretty good gamut. Well, we certainly have an example of your landscape type yeah. of photography, right? Yeah, most of, mostly up here I'm doing <laughs> landscapes because that's what seems to fit in with the, the gallery motif and with the audiences that are buying stuff here. So how do you approach your work artistically? I mean, what are the challenges there? Well, the primary challenge, I think, is since I work outdoors, it's dealing with weather, mm -hmm. uh, which is a primary component in figuring out how to compose the shots. Uh, I try to shoot things as naturally as I can uh, through the camera. Uh, without as much manipulation in post, but I also recognize that uh, what um, what your eye sees and what the camera sees are two different things. I mean, the eye is much more sophisticated, so you have to do some post work in order to be able to uh, uh, generate the image that you saw with your eye. Um, the uh, the primary thing I try to do when I'm out is is work on original material. I tend not to do the standard stuff like maroon bells and, mm -hmm. and stuff where you see 500 photographers along the lake shore, you know. <laughs> uh, I tend to work for more original landscapes. Uh, I'll tend to uh, mess with abstractions and things to make them more original. Um, and things like that, yeah. Uh, are there any current projects or trends you're, you're currently working on? Yeah, COVID's kind of driven me out into the, uh, into the grasslands and we were talking about that earlier. Uh, that uh, uh, up here in the park, ironically, the, the trails have been full and there have been a lot of people without masks. And so uh, I've been sort of working out in areas uh, that are more rural, um, that are more challenging perhaps to shoot, that, that work on the vastness of the landscape, such as the grasslands. Uh, because of the fires, I just had a, a, a photo, uh, uh, a cover photo in uh, the Gazette, uh, Trail Gazette, um, on the uh, Cameron Peak fire uh, plume. Oh, that was yours? Yeah. Oh. Well, there are several of them, and several right. photographers, um, but I'm one of them that got featured on the one particular day. But I've actually been going out to uh, firescapes and actually working in landscapes where uh, there's a lot of burnt material as well as new growth coming up mm -hmm. in some of the old fire locations. So the High Peak fire uh, down 14 and the uh, Walker uh, Ranch fire behind Boulder. Uh, that's really provided some interesting subject matter where nature nature is recovering from things yeah. from from devastation. Uh, also, where I tend to like subjects where man and uh, nature are trying to coexist in the same environment, where nature is taking things over, uh, or man is intruding upon nature. It creates a really interesting dynamic. Yeah, interesting contrast, just like the, yeah. the burnt forest and the new growth coming up, it, yeah. signs of hope, so to speak. Well, and that's the whole <laughs> idea when you think about fires. Um, fires in the West are basically a necessary part of the natural uh, germination of the seeds and mm -hmm. rebuilding of the landscape so that new foliage can come up and small animals have habitats to live in, in addition to the large sections of the forage forest that remain intact. Of course, unfortunately, in the process of the burning it may destroy some of those habitats and, and no question yeah <clears throat> of those animals and, and people too it's cycle like, of life yeah yeah that is you know it's one thing to be out in the middle of nowhere and have those things happen but among populations it's a little different story yeah, absolutely and it's it, there's no question that there's real devastation there mm -hmm. um, but there's also hope as well that's great 
Um, you know, so what kinds of uh, locations do you like to frequent? Well, any place that's uh, got as few people as possible, generally, uh, <laughs> and isolated areas as well. Um, but like I said, I'll tend to work in urban landscapes as well. Um, I think it's really trying to find places that are unique and more interesting. Um, weather is a big factor in driving exactly where it is I'll go on any particular time. Mm -hmm. um, the, wor the worse the weather is, the, the better the possibilities are for photography. And so it makes it, it so that also creates enough challenges too. You got like pictures of coming storms or things of that nature. Yeah, you tend to find, you tend to find yourself working on the fringes of of uh, weather, whether it's coming in just before it comes in or just before it goes out or just as it's going out. Mm -hmm. um, naturally, you can work in the storms and that can be dynamic, but that also creates a lot of problems with a you know if it's raining and snowing and things like that, it creates real problems and hurdles that you have to get over when you're actually shooting in that environment. Um, usually the transitional periods are the ones that tend to be the most dynamic. Mm -hmm. I'm generally looking at stuff that attracts me, that attracts my eye, mm -hmm. uh, that has a fascination to me because if I'm going to spend my time out in the field uh, being inspired to deal with weather and deal with the time and deal with hauling the equipment to where it is I need to go, I mean if I'm carrying a camera pack I'm carrying 30 pounds of equipment right. uh, up a mountain trail. Uh, I'm going to be focusing on the things that I'm interested in, um, and it's often it's it's you know sometimes it can be spontaneous. Sometimes you can just see something. It's like there's a shot, and you know, okay. I'm going to shoot it. But most of the time, you have an idea of what it is you're looking for, mm -hmm. what it is you're looking to do to expand your portfolio, um, and so uh, you go in with some sort of idea of this is. Uh, this is the place I want to go, this is what I want to shoot, this is the equipment I'm going to need, and this is the weather conditions under which I'm willing to hike into in order to, to seek that out. And you don't always succeed. You know, you know. <laughs> yeah. so, I mean, wildlife photographers, I mean, Carol who talks about who's shooting wildlife. I, I do a lot of landscapes, but I don't tend to do much uh, wildlife yeah. because I don't have the patience those guys have. Because your subject doesn't want to cooperate most of the time. <laughs> And so you'll spend hours crawling along the ground and getting into location to be a part of that habitat so that the animal's as natural as possible. And then you have to wait for them to do something that's worth taking a photograph of. <laughs> and it's, so it's, I, I just don't have that's the patience. Not, that's to do not that. your thing. <laughs> not, not, not yet, anyway. Not yet. We'll see. Uh, <laughs> well, even, even that's still a challenge to, to, to photo, photograph like landscapes because you have the you know, right lighting or whatever timing of the. Oh, yeah. yeah so. It, 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 that plays in it too. And I have to admire you, you're know, lugging a bunch of weight to go up in the mountains like you have to to yeah. get some of these back, you know, pictures. Well, and that's really part of it. You know, getting, getting to the location is, is half, the, half the battle. It might be a, a 10 mile hike to go in, but mm -hmm. if you want to get morning shots uh, in, during the golden hour uh, or evening shots, you know, when the sun's setting, um, you're going to have to hike in there the day before and stay until the day after. Uh -huh. uh, because you're not going to be able to make that 10 mile trek. Uh, you could do it, but you usually don't want to do it in total darkness in the middle of the night in order to get there at dawn yeah. uh, in order to set up and take the shot. So you're usually going to go in the day before, set up your camp, scout out the shots you want to take, and then, and then be ready to take those that night uh, and the next morning. So um, where are you headed creatively then? Well, I think what's What's going on is I'm experimenting a lot more with collage and abstraction photographs and such. I have a couple of exhibits now, one of which actually focuses on the collage work at the hospital. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's currently up right now, and they're fairly large works. Uh, and that's taking multiple photographs uh, uh, within a certain environment and then blending them together to create a um, uh, sort of collage effect. If you're familiar with David Hockney. Uh, David Hockney's work, uh, who was mostly a visual artist in a lot of different uh, mediums, uh, he did some photography work that was similar to the kind of stuff I'm trying to do. Um, the, uh, the other things that I'm tending to do, I'm trying to do a little more studio work, maybe incorporate more people, artistic uh, um, uh, portraits, etc., that I might be willing to pursue. Uh, and I also tend to do some writing. I'm doing some articles associated with the photography that I do, getting that stuff published. Uh, and even doing some fiction and trying to incorporate photography into that as well. So I'm trying to create multimedia kind of things, again, to expand the capacity of what I can do as a photographer so that I have a more marketable uh, presence within the field. 
Well, nothing like a few challenges. In the oh, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't change. You know, if anything, this whole thing, this whole digital uh, uh, expansion is simply kept, it keeps more photographers on your toes. I mean, you can do it. You just got to keep at it. Yeah, I think, you know, cons considering, you know, that, you know, like you said, there's many, many photographers out there. You all look at this, you know, Lost Peak, for example. How do you find your your version of that that's unique compared to anybody else? Exactly. And, and that's always a challenge, I'm sure. It is. You know, it, Maroon Bells is a, a place near Aspen where it's got the perfect peaks and the, with the perfect snow and the perfect lake and the perfect Aspen fall colors, uh -huh. if you get it right. Yeah. And, of course, it's been, you know, every during the peak period, right, right about now, you, know, you may have hundreds of photographers up on that lake shore with their spot getting ready to take the shot uh -huh. when the light comes up in the morning. And the best shot I ever saw that a photographer took was he got in front of all of them and he took a picture of all the photographers taking maroon bells. <laughs> uh, that was probably one of the best. But, you know, something like that is challenging. I mean, I know photographers do it because they think you, you got to have it in your portfolio. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, But for me, it just feels like there's too much congestion uh, in an environment like that to be able to shoot. The likelihood that I'm going to shoot anything that's as good as anything that's been shot there is unlikely because the conditions simply aren't going to be there most of the time mm -hmm. to be that perfect that you're going to get it. And of course, there are photographers who have shot it who are technically much better than I am. So the, the idea that I'm going to come away with something that's going to be as good or better is unlikely. Not that it has to be. It mm -hmm. just needs to be a really good shot. But I've seen it. It's been, I've seen it millions of times. I'd rather go shoot something new and original. Definitely. Definitely. Are you showing anywhere else besides the hospital? I am. Um, there's a uh, exhibit that's still up at MedEx okay. uh, uh, downtown. Um, it, it's, uh, pro it's focused mostly on landscapes and architectural work. And there's at least 30 pieces there. Mm. Uh, it's up. It's supposed to actually come down, but the next artist hasn't lined up yet. So uh, the owner said, "Let's leave it up for a while." So I don't know what that means. Uh, but if you want to go see it, go see it soon. Okay. Because uh, I don't know how much longer it'll be up. Well, thanks, John. Oh, thank you, Lars. And you are welcome to visit the Art Center and to view John Shelton's uh, photography, along with our featured artists, uh, Carol Gregory, and the rest of our creative artist members. The Art Center is open Friday through Monday from 12 to 4, and private tours can be arranged by contacting the Art Center at 970-586-5882.